On your iPad, you can download content directly from iTunes. To open iTunes, tap on the iTunes icon on the home screen. As long as you are signed in with the Apple ID you signed in with for the App Store, the iTunes Store will open to the Featured Music page. The iTunes Store is organized into nine sections. Music, Movies, TV Shows, Ping, Podcasts, Audiobooks, iTunes U, Purchased, and downloads. Some sections are organized using different categories at the top. On the music page, you can sort content by default, featured, or by top charts and genius. To find a specific song, tap on the search bar here. The keyboard will appear and you can type your search criteria, such as name or artist. Here, I've searched for content matching National Public Radio. Results are sorted by category. To open the National Public Radio podcast series, tap on the box for the result. Here, the name of the podcast series, developer info, and rating are at the top. Just below is a description of the podcast series. Tapping on a specific podcast will display additional info about that specific podcast in the series, and a video with additional information is available. Tap free, then get episode to download. Now, when you open the downloads page, you can track the download status and estimated time. Tapping this button, you can pause and resume the download. Downloads can take a few minutes depending on your internet speed. You can organize and listen to music on your iPad using the iPod tapping here. The iPod will open to music. Along the bottom, your music can be organized by song, artist, album, genre, or composer. Your iPad is organized on the left. Music by default, then podcasts, audiobooks and purchased. In the top left hand corner you can control the play volume with this slider. To play a song, tap on it. The song will play and the album art will be the background if available. Tapping on the screens brings up the controls. Tapping this button, you can switch between repeat all, repeat this song, and repeat off. Tapping the icon on the right toggles shuffle on and off. Tapping this icon will flip the screen to a standard list view with a timeline. Tapping the icon again will return back to the default album art view. Tapping here returns you to the iPod while still playing the song. At the top, you have your standard controls for back a track, pause, and forward a track. If you have a lot of music on your iPod, it may be faster to search for it than to find it alphabetically. In the search bar, type the name, artist, or album of the song and the device will filter your library for the correct song or songs. To add a playlist in your iPod, tap this plus sign. Here, you will be prompted to enter a name for your new playlist. Tap save to continue. 
here, you can select which songs you want to be on your playlist by tapping the blue and white plus signs along the right. Once you have selected a song, the text will gray out. To save your playlist, tap Done, and then tap Done again. The playlist can now be found in the left navigation bar. To add or remove songs to or from your playlist, make sure the playlist is selected and tap Edit. Tapping the red and white minuses along the left will open this Delete button. Tap Delete to remove it from the playlist. The song will still be in your iPod music library. You can also use this process to remove an entire playlist. This time, you will be asked if you really want to delete this playlist. Tap Delete to remove the playlist from your iPod. Again, the music in the playlist can still be found in your iPod music library. Out of the box, your iPad comes with YouTube pre-installed. Tapping on the YouTube icon opens YouTube to your search page. Along the bottom, YouTube videos are organized into seven pages. Featured contains videos that YouTube is featuring. Tapping on Top Rated, you can view top videos of today, this week, and of all time. The next page is for videos most viewed, and again, these can be organized by most viewed today, this week, and of all time. The next page is where your bookmarked videos can be found, and at the top, you can toggle to playlists. Next page contains all your YouTube subscriptions. Since I haven't signed in yet, here I need to enter my YouTube username and password. Now tap sign in. Once you are signed in, videos from channels you are subscribed to will appear. The next section is for my videos. Here you can see all the videos that you have uploaded to your YouTube channel. Finally, the last section is history. Here, you can access the latest videos you have viewed. To clear the history, tap Clear in the upper left-hand corner, then tap Clear History. To find a specific video, there is a search bar in the top right. Here, type your search criteria and tap Search on the keyboard to generate results. Once you have located the video you want to view, tap on the video thumbnail. This will automatically begin playing the video. Below the video, by default, is additional information about the video. You can also view related videos, more from this developer, as well as read and leave comments. Turning your iPad horizontal, the video will reorient and enlarge to full screen. Tapping on the video will bring up additional playback options. Along the top is a timeline where you can track and find specific sections in the video. If the options disappear, simply tap on the screen again. Tapping the book on the left will bookmark this video. Tapping this icon will revert the video from full screen view. Now, when you access bookmarks, the video is available. Switching to My Videos is one of the pages that gives you the option to sign out. Tap Sign Out in the upper left hand corner then tap sign out again.
Netflix is an application that you can download from the App Store and is great for watching movies. Tapping on the Netflix icon, you will be prompted to sign in using your email address and password. Tap Sign In to continue. Netflix is organized into four sections along the bottom. Home, Genres, Search, and Instant Queue. Using genres is a great way to find specific types of movies. Here, I'll find action movies. The Boondock Saints. This looks good. To start instant playback, tap on the thumbnail. Turning the device horizontal reorients and enlarges to full screen. Tapping this icon, you can adjust the picture size. If you realize you've missed the last 30 seconds, you can tap this icon to return 30 seconds prior in the video. This slider makes it easy to adjust the volume. When you have finished watching the video, tap Done to return. Tapping on the text will open this menu with a description of the movie and related movies. Tapping this button, you can add the movie to your instant queue that can also be accessed on other devices. When you add the movie to your queue, it will ask if you want to move it to the top of the queue, or you can press OK to simply add it. I'll now add another movie to my instant queue. However, this time, I'll add it to the top. Now, when I access the instant queue, this movie is on the top, and the other movie is in the queue. On your device, you can access Google Maps, helping you better navigate throughout your day. Tapping on this icon, Google Maps will open to your current location. To search for a specific place, type in the address here. Tap search on the keyboard. Here, I'll search for New York City. Tapping here pulls back the map with view options. They are classic, satellite, hybrid, and terrain. You can also disable the traffic overlays and drop a pin to save the location. Tapping the orange icon on the left of your location bar will open Google Street View. With this, you can walk around streets of locations right from your living room. Tapping this icon will return you to the map. Tapping the blue icon will open the information box with options to get directions to here or to get directions from here. The address and options to add it to your contacts, share the location, and add to bookmarks are available below. Here, I'll select get directions to this location. Along the bottom is your navigation bar. First choose whether you want to drive, take a bus, or walk to your destination. Driving is selected by default. Tap Start to begin. Once you make it to your destination, you will need directions back. Tapping this icon will reverse the directions. Hitting Start, I can now use these arrows to navigate the route, or it will keep up with you as you travel.
Tapping here, you can access your address book with the option to access your saved bookmarks and recent locations below. To zoom in and out on the screen, you can double tap or use the multi-touch feature to pinch to zoom. On your iPad, you can organize both photos and videos to view. Tapping on the Photos icon, you can see all the photos saved on your device. Tapping on a photo thumbnail enlarges the photo. Sliding your finger along the screen, you can switch between different photos in sequence. Turning your iPad, the screen will reorient between landscape and portrait views. Tapping on the screen, controls will appear. Tapping this icon gives you additional options for the photo. They are email photo, use as wallpaper, print, and copy photo. Tapping this icon, you can delete the photo, and when you tap the delete photo box that appears, the photo will be deleted. Tapping the slideshow icon, you can first customize your photo slideshow. Tapping transitions, you can choose photos to transition with a dissolve, cube, ripple, wipe, or origami. By default, it is set to dissolve. You can also choose to play music. Enabling this feature, you can choose songs from your iPod to play during the slideshow. Tapping Start Slideshow, the slideshow will begin. Tapping on the screen will bring back controls. Tapping all photos will return you to the original gallery. With your iPad, you can also keep saved videos. Tapping on videos will open your video gallery. In this case, there is only one video saved. Tapping on the thumbnail will open the video's information page with info including video length, dimensions, and size. To begin playing, tap the play button in the top right hand corner. Again, tapping on the screen will bring up the controls. Using the slider at the top, you can navigate the video's timeline. When you are finished viewing the video, tap Done in the upper left hand corner. Tapping this icon will return you to your video gallery. Your iPad can be used as a digital picture frame. To customize your picture frame, first tap on the settings icon and select picture frame from the settings menu. Here, you can choose whether you want pictures to transition with a dissolve or origami effect. Next, you can select how long you want photos to run for, whether or not you want it to zoom in on faces or not, and if you want the photos to shuffle in sequence. Finally, you can choose if you want the picture frame to display all photos or just photos from a specific album. Here, I'm selecting pictures to run for two seconds. To start the picture frame, first lock your device. When you wake the device back up, tap this icon and your picture frame slideshow will begin.
Tapping on the screen will bring back controls. Tapping the picture frame icon again, the slideshow will stop and you can continue using your device as normal. You are able to restrict specific applications and utilities on your device, such as for a child or an employee. To access these restrictions, tap on the settings icon and select general settings. Here you will find restrictions near the middle. When you enable restrictions, you will need to set a restriction passcode. Here, I'll set it to 1234. Confirm your password and restrictions are enabled. Here, you can view all available restrictions. For example, to restrict the web browser, simply turn the toggle switch off. Now, when you return to the home screen, the Safari icon is no longer available. To enable a restricted feature, simply access the Restrictions menu again and enter your restrictions passcode. Now you can enable Safari. To turn restrictions off, tap Disable Restrictions and once again you will need to enter your restrictions passcode. As you can see, Safari is now available once again. To access international settings for your iPad, tap on the settings icon and under general settings you will find international near the bottom. The first option is to set a device language. Here it is set to English. To change the language, tap on the language you prefer. When you're finished, tap Done. The next option is for international keyboards. Tapping here, you can view enabled keyboards. In this case, English is the only enabled keyboard. Here, you can change the layout and settings for your keyboard. Tapping Add New Keyboard, you can enable additional keyboards for use. Here, we'll add the Chinese Simplified Keyboard. As you can see, layout options are now available above for the Chinese keyboard as well. Now, when you access the keyboard, this new option is available. Tapping here, you can switch to the Simplified Chinese Keyboard we just added. To return to your original keyboard, tap the icon again. To remove added keyboards, return back to International Keyboard Settings, and in the top right hand corner is an edit icon. Tapping this, you can tap on the red circle to the left of the keyboard you want to remove, and tap delete here to remove it. Back to International Settings, you can also change the region format. Here, you can select your preferred region. The last international option is Calendar. Here, you can choose between Gregorian, Japanese, and Buddhist calendars. Your iPad comes loaded with Bluetooth capability. Tapping on the settings icon, under a general settings, Bluetooth is located near the top. Here you can enable and disable Bluetooth. When you enable Bluetooth, your device will search for available Bluetooth devices in range. This range is usually around 30 feet. Once your Bluetooth device has been found, tap on its name to begin pairing. First, you will need to enter your Bluetooth PIN. Most PINs are four zeros. You can find your specific PIN in your Bluetooth user manual. Once you've entered your PIN, tap Pair and your Bluetooth will automatically pair and connect. When you are done using your Bluetooth, it will save battery to turn Bluetooth off.
When you turn Bluetooth back on again, the device is still paired, and to connect, simply tap on the Bluetooth device's icon on your screen. Once the icon bar says connected, you're all set. If you do not want your iPad to automatically pair with this Bluetooth device when Bluetooth is enabled again, tap on the blue circle on the device bar on the screen, and here, tap Forget This Device. Tap OK to forget. Again, turn Bluetooth off, and next time, when you turn it back on again, your iPad will not pair with that Bluetooth device automatically. To completely erase all your information from your iPad, you will need to do a factory data reset. Tapping on the settings icon, under general settings, at the bottom you will find reset. Here you have several different reset options. To reset the device and clear all personal data, select erase all content and settings. You will be asked if you really want to reset your device. Tap Erase to continue or Cancel to void the request. This will wipe all your information and you will be asked one more time if you really want to reset your device. Tap Erase to initiate the reset. The screen will go black and a status bar will appear. This can take several minutes. Once complete, your device will power back on and prompt you to plug it into iTunes, just as it was when you first took your iPad out of the box.